This important podcast is brought to you by the Health Ranger store, offering a wide selection of prepping and survival products, including nutritional solutions and storable certified organic superfoods. Check out our full selection at healthrangerstore.com forward slash prep with Mike. Thank you for your support. It's now abundantly clear that the coronavirus pandemic is the black swan event that no one factored into their decisions and planning and activities, anything like that. A black swan event, in case you uh, are new to that term, is usually some big unexpected, unforecast type of event that's a game changer for society. For example, a black swan event would be a meteor dropping out of the sky and hitting North America or something, a big one, or an EMP attack from North Korea or a solar flare from the sun that takes out all electronics on planet Earth or aliens showing up on the White House lawn or whatever. Big game-changing events that you really can't predict. They're not part of the normal ebb and flow of society, so they're not factored in. For example, I was talking about cruise lines recently. Cruise lines You know, they're getting hit by this coronavirus and cruise lines have very narrow margins after you take into account the debt service they have to pay for their ships. They build very expensive, large ships that cost hundreds of millions of dollars and they have that debt burden every day, regardless of whether or not passengers are showing up. So they rely on a steady stream of passengers to give them enough money to service the debt, which will take on a typical ship, you know, over 20 years, I don't know what the term is, maybe it's a 25-year term, to pay off. It's like buying a house, but a giant floating house that holds 3,000 people or whatever. So when there's a black swan event like this pandemic, if passengers stop signing up for cruises, which might be a prudent thing to do at this point, given that there are already a couple of ships where this infection has been spreading, well, then the cruise lines are in very deep financial trouble because their overhead is fixed. And then their revenues plunge. That's the problem with having, you know, large uh, debt, uh, large expensive capital outlays in order to build the, the, the ships that people are sailing on. But of course, the cruise lines industry is not the only industry that would suffer from this. There are a lot of tourism related industries, transportation industries such as airlines, for example, uh, restaurants. And, you know, big tourism in in certain cities like New York City and San Francisco and even globally, London and so on, all around the world, wherever people like to go, they may stop going if there's a pandemic. But another black swan effect of this that I think many people have not considered is the issue of the supply chain out of China. So what if you show up one day in Walmart and half the shelves are empty? you would probably freak out like, what's going on here? Well, what's happening is that most of the goods at Walmart come out of China. And right now, there are ships on the way from China that will restock Walmart for the next few weeks because it takes about, I don't know, maybe three to five weeks to get goods from China to the shelf of your local Walmart. So there's about a three to five week buffer of supply lines that's already in process. But A lot of exports have halted now because the factories are shut down because everybody's quarantined. Now, not everywhere in China, but in a lot of regions, and the quarantine is expanding. According to many reports, there are as many as 400 million people in China that are under restrictions or quarantines or voluntary lockdowns or various forms of that, and a lot of factories are not running. So after the current ships sailing across the Pacific Ocean, unload their cargo that goes to the store shelves in Walmart and Target and Costco and everywhere else, there's going to be a gap. That gap is going to be maybe months. It's it's hard to say. By some estimates, this virus will peak in March in the Wuhan region, and it, it will begin to fall, and we might be able to see businesses reopen sometime in late March. I'm not sure, but clearly this is going to be maybe about a two month disruption if if that like that's a good case if it gets worse if the the outbreak continues and if there are repeated infections from the same people we've seen cases of that where people somehow get reinfected even after they've been cured so to speak after they've recovered if that happens a lot we could be looking at a shutdown lasting many many months this is going to affect not only the consumer goods like we talked about 
Target and Walmart and so on, but also semiconductors. So the semiconductor industry has a lot of component factories in the Wuhan region. And those component factories provide components to companies in Japan and Taiwan and Korea and other places to build more complex electronics and circuit boards and appliances and computers and control systems and all kinds of things. So we're going to have that same disruption and outage in a lot of electronics-based products. And again, this is something that people aren't factoring in. So once you understand that the supply chain disruptions are real, that they've already begun, Apple has already said they're not going to be able to, to meet their delivery targets for iPhones because of this shutdown, then you have to start asking, well, what are the financial implications of all of this? Which industries are the most vulnerable or likely to be hurt during these disruptions? And of course, semiconductors would be one of them, and maybe travel and tourism industry, transportation industries such as airlines. You could take some pretty obvious guesses, but there are a lot of other things that maybe aren't so obvious, such as retail business, you know, like the Walmarts of the world, or Amazon. How is Amazon going to restock its products when many of those products come out of China. And in fact, it's Chinese sellers that sell a lot of products on Amazon, taking advantage of the subsidized US Postal Service, you know, kind of like dirt cheap postage from Hong Kong and China, which is insane, by the way, but that happens. And so Amazon could take a big hit because of the lack of products from Hong Kong and China and that entire region. So is anybody factoring that into Amazon? You know, is, is anybody really looking at the long-term implications of this? Because I think the answer is not really. Not very many people are. I mean, certain individuals like Gerald Salenti, you know, he's aware of it. He's talking about it. I'm talking about it. A few others are. But by and large, across the board, most people are not talking about the implications of this. They're not aware of where this is headed. And they're just thinking that this is no big deal. It's going to blow over. Everything's going to be fine. Well, that's the spin from the media, the media that's trying to cover for the stock market bubble that they don't want to see popped. And no doubt when it does pop, they'll blame us for talking about financial reality. <laughs> but they, they have to protect the bubble. And the bubble's built on faith, so they have to protect the faith, which means protect public sentiment. So they can't have people panicking or having even any sense of fear about anything. So it has to be constantly good news every day. Everything's awesome. The market's going to go up forever. Your retirement fund is safe. Your pension is valuable. You're going you're gonna to have a great life. The virus is not going to spread in America. We've got it all under control, even though we're flying hundreds of infected patients out of China or potentially infected into U.S. cities like San Antonio and various cities in California and Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah, there are plane loads of Americans being evacuated from China and deposited in those cities, which seems insane. But then again, everything in our world seems insane right now. So who's keeping track? The point is, these are black swan events. And you can't factor these in, and people haven't. And these are the kind of events that are like, you know, Six Sigma moves that shatter history, shatter financial markets, and shatter nations, and, and destroy governments, and cause collapse. These are the kind of events like giant volcanoes going off, you know, centuries ago that change human history. Now this pandemic right now it's based on an engineered biological weapon and I believe this will change human history. And we haven't even begun to see the real full effect of this yet. It's still to come. It's going to get a lot worse before it blows over. So stay informed, read my website naturalnews.com and listen to my podcast at Brighton. Dot com. Uh, YouTube is banning entire channels now just for talking about the coronavirus, but you can talk about it at Brighton. Just go to Brighton.com and uh, check out my channel there, HR Report. Thank you for listening. When it comes to prepping, you not only need good products that can help keep you alive, awake, aware, and nourished during difficult times, you also need products you can trust. At the Health Ranger store, we do extensive laboratory testing using an in-house lab that's ISO accredited. It's inspected, it's audited. It's a two-year process to even get that accreditation. We use multiple mass spec instruments, state-of-the-art science. I'm a published science author as well and a patent holder on several technologies, some of which we use variations of in our lab. The purpose of this lab is to help you make sure you get clean 
foods, superfoods, storable foods for emergency preparedness and survival use. We have a certified organic lab tested, what's called Ranger Bucket collection of storable foods with some survival gear in the buckets to help you even boil water and cook those foods and so on. It's a, a fantastic product. We can barely keep it in stock even during normal times. In a crisis, we'll be wiped out of this product because it actually takes us a lot of time to make those products. But if they're in stock, you can get them now at healthrangerstore.com slash prep with Mike. In fact, go to that URL, healthrangerstore.com slash prep with Mike, and you'll see some of our survival and preparedness supplies, including iodine, colloidal silver products and gel first aid products, storable foods, superfoods, medicinal herbs for first aid, and much more. We have a lot of products for you to help you be self-reliant, to be safe, to survive difficult circumstances, natural disasters, and all kinds of things. If you want to get prepared, do it with us at the Health Ranger store so that you know you're getting safe, clean, laboratory-verified preparedness foods, supplements, and other related products. Again, the URL is healthrangerstore.com forward slash prep with Mike. All one word, no spaces. Prep with Mike. I'm Mike Adams. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching. If you want to support our mission, visit us at healthrangerstore.com for the world's largest selection of lab verified superfood and nutritional products for healthy living. It's at healthrangerstore.com.